Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. It's a while since we've had a Bible study or a sermon. <coughs> well, uh, today I've been studying for Hyde Park. We're going to Hyde Park as a team. Um, so, um, somebody who's come to, to be involved with us in Manchester, um, they wanted to go. Um, so we've decided to, to go and we're going to go down. So in fear and trepidation, uh, pray for us because uh, I, I did have two good debates when I went down there, but the preaching I found it very, very difficult. And, um, you know, I just, I just uh, pray that God would, would, would bless us when we go down because we can't do it ourselves. We need the Lord's help. So, so without further ado, so today I've been uh, preparing and researching for Hyde Park uh, and getting ready for Hyde Park. Um, I've got my notes and, and things. And, and uh, in the midst of that, uh, today I, I was asked by a church over on the south side of Manchester, the pastor asked me to take a, a, a Bible study group and so I went up there and uh, I preached for them and this is the message that I preached, I prepared this message today and uh, so I'm just going to pray, <clears throat> let's pray, it's good to be with you, I hope you're okay love to everybody out there and I'm sorry I've not done as many Bible studies and preaching like I said we had uh, meetings here and uh, a few people were hoping to, to be Presbyterian and Reformed um, I prayed about it and at the moment I felt it's not right to be doing it uh, they might start up again the meetings but how they start up in what format if it's going to be Royal Blood Ministries or Presbyterian I don't know um, so that's why I've not been preaching regularly and, and teaching and I've made little short videos. But I do miss getting into the Word and teaching it. And if you haven't heard me, go and hear some of the sermons and Bible studies. I'm sure they'll be a blessing to you. Um, so that's why I've not done much Bible teaching. I've been mainly focusing uh, on the streets and I've not been well for the last two, not for the last four weeks. I'm still not right even now. I still can cough and and uh, not feel too good. So, so that's why you've not seen any or many Bible studies or things like that. So forgive me. So, don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com. You can see my Twitter and Facebook. And um, there's a, a really brilliant picture that some somebody took of me with the Power Rangers. So that's my new. Uh, picture on uh, Twitter now so so it's just just lightens things up so let's pray Father God we thank you for this day and we give you the prayers of glory and we give you the honor Father I just pray that you bless the preaching of your word today pray Lord it be a blessing to us and Father that each one would know your love and grace in Jesus name Amen Amen So we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, it says in Ephesians chapter 6 it says finally my brethren verse 10 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, sometimes we can feel um, just we haven't got the strength, we haven't got the courage, we haven't got what it takes to go forward for whatever reason. And my first point is be strong in Ephesians 6 verse 10. It says that, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So sometimes situations come which drag us of our energy, discourage us, whatever. And God is saying here be strong just like when uh, in D-Day they went to uh, invade France and to take back France from the Nazis, they did the planning and 
They were determined to breach those beaches and to get onto land. You've got to be determined to go forward. Why? Why can you be determined? Why can you be determined to go forward? Well, Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. If you turn your Bible to Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter... Now, come on, get your Bible out. Stop, stop, not, stop listening to sermons and not getting your Bible out. Get your Bible out and check whether what's being taught is right or wrong or not. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jodak, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am what? I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. God is with you right now. God is right with you. You say, I can't. I, I feel weak. I can't do it. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go forward. Be strong, for I am with you. God is with you right now. You say, but my marriage is on the rocks. God is with you right now. My ministry is on the rocks. God is with you right now. He's with you right now. All the resources of God, all the majesty of God, all the glory of God, all the greatness of God, all that God is right now, who created the universe, who upholds the billions of stars, right now, He is with you. <coughs> You've not got 20 billionaires behind you. You've not got 20 million soldiers behind you. You've not got 20 prime ministers behind you. You've got something greater. His name is Almighty God. He says he is with you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace of Christ, in Christ Jesus. And then you could read 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be strong in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Let's turn to that. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Come on, brothers and sisters. Get your Bibles out. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Come on. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 11 For if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God has given you a gift. He's given you a gift. So go and use it. Don't walk in fear. Don't walk in fear. Don't let the enemy oppress you. Shake it off. It's not of God if you're walking in fear. If you're walking in fear, it's not of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. It's from the enemy and you need to shake it off. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Says... Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people, says, Thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto the fathers to give them. Be strong. He's with you. God is with you. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 10 to 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 7. Psalm 138 verse 3 says he will give you strength. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Isaiah, I'm using the King James. Get a literal Bible translation. Stop using these modern translations that are not literal. Isaiah 40 verse 28, because they're going to be feminist and pro-gay pro and feminist and all the rest of it, these Bibles that are coming out in the next few years. You need to get back to a good, sound Bible translation. Get back to the King James. Get back to these old Bible translations. And you scholars out there who know Greek and Hebrew, you get translate. You you get producing good Bibles that are based on good Greek Greek and Hebrew manuscripts. Isaiah forty four uh, chap, uh, chapter forty 
Isaiah chapter 40. Shame on you academics. Shame on you academics. Making the Bible a feminist Bible. How dare you. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. In your relationship, if it's difficult, in your ministry, if it's difficult, then minister to God, think about God, and God will renew you, and God will strengthen you, and God will help you. So be strong. Matthew Henry says, spiritual strength and courage are needed for our spiritual warfare and suffering. We need spiritual strength. And we can ask God for it, and God will give us strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. But I could not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them. I think it's, yeah. Is it 5.13? Sorry, I'm in the wrong book. My eyes, my eyes, my eyesight is not really good these days. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You're saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. You can the battle's too difficult. You can. The, the relationship's too broken. You can. He's with you right now. Be strong. Secondly, sorry, I got an itch. Be equipped. Roman soldier needs to be equipped. If the soldier goes into battle with no armor on, what's he going to do? You need to be equipped for the battle. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse, uh, chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armour of God. The whole armour protected your front so that you would not get attacked. And very often in the midst of our lives, in the midst of our difficulties, we can see, and in the midst of the battle of life, we can see things that we know that are not going to help us in the midst of that difficulty. We can put armour on that is not meant for us. We can try to be somebody we're not. We can try to pretend to be something that we're not. And we, we can try all our various strategies to try and get out of a situation, but it's all our own strategies. And it's not of God, and it's not is armor. You need spiritual armor. If you turn to Ephesians six thirteen, Ephesians six thirteen, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, put on what the whole armor of God, not some, but the whole armor. We're to resist the devil. We're, 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 we're to get equipped and we're to move forward in ministry, in, in life. But we do it with God's weapons, God's armour. We need to be equipped. Have you been seeking help in the wrong places? It's no good going to a non-Christian asking for advice. It's no good going to a cult member to ask for advice. It's no good going to... Uh, places where you know that they're not going to give you the advice of the word of God you've got to go to God and his armor to help you in this situation thirdly know your enemy the Trojan horse went into the city and the soldiers at night came down and took the city out they came down out of the Trojan horse and they took the city they didn't know the enemy. We not need to know our enemy. Who is our enemy? If we don't know our enemy, we cannot fight them and we cannot beat them. 
The enemy is not the person doing your reading. The enemy is not the people around you. The enemy is the principalities and powers, the heavenly forces, the demonic forces that are trying to bring you down by using other people. And the other people may not know they're being used, but you need to go to the heavenlies and realize that it's the demonic forces that are trying to take you out. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 says and not marvel for Satan himself transformed into an angel of light Satan can be an angel of light he can uh, uh, come in a way that looks pleasing to the eye but it's bringing us down and we've got to be careful but if you turn to Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. It says. And having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. Triumphing over them in it. Jesus Christ destroyed the powers of darkness. He destroyed the powers of darkness. He, he, we have victory if we trust in him. We have victory if we believe in him. We have victory, my friend. Victory over the devil. Victory over the demons. Victory because of Christ and the blood of Jesus. He washes us, cleanses us, and he has died for us and rescued us from the power of darkness in our lives. And we don't need to go to Christ and look to Christ and claim Christ and trust in Christ, the anointed Messiah. Know your enemy. Fourthly, use your weapons. The gladiators, when they're in the arena, they take a weapon and they use it. You don't see it. You don't see it on television in those ancient films. Those films and the ancient things that they used to do, that the, the, the gladiators just sat there like chilling out. You no, know, gets a, a sword or a spear or whatever and gets on with it. You've got to take up the, uh, the weapons. You've got to fight with the weapons. Ephesians 6.14 Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand therefore being... Your loins girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. You need to be standing in the truth. So many people today are just rooted in feelings. No, you need to be in the word of God. You need to be grounded in the word of God. Jesus said, my word is truth. The word is truth. John 7, 17. We need to be in the word of God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. It talks about the word, to stand on the word. And you need to be grounded in the word of God. You need to be grounded in the truth of God. So when the difficulties come and the challenges come, you're full of the word of God. Are you studying the word of God? Are you reading the word of God? Are you meditating on the word of God? Is the word of God filling your heart richly? What is filling your heart? You say, I'm having spiritual experiences and great experiences, but are you filling your heart with the word of God? You might be an intellectual when you're studying and reading all the time, but is your mind being filled with the Word of God? You might be busy at work, a pragmatist, always doing practical, doing stuff. But are you filling your mind with the Word of God? Because if you don't, you're going to get taken down. And then in, uh, it says in verse 14, it says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, the blessed breastplate of righteousness. That is the righteousness of Christ, knowing that you're covered in Him, covered in His blood, covered in His righteousness. That means, my friend, that there is now no condemnation. So don't let the past drag you back. Don't let the mistakes drag you back. You're under the blood of Christ. But also the righteousness is walking a holy life. If we let sin in, any word in our lives, if we let sin in, we're going to get taken down. If we let sin in, we're going to be weakened. We're going to be going into battle with two arms cut off. So make sure that the stuff in your life, you cut the sin out. Because if you don't, you're going to get taken down. Number five, keep it simple. In relationships and ministry, things go wrong. Things are difficult and it becomes complicated. Everything's complicated. 
But it's not complicated. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He's focusing on the gospel. The gospel brings peace. The gospel brings <coughs> great salvation. In the midst of the complexity of your life, you need to go back to the simplicity of the gospel. It doesn't matter if you've got a PhD. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're the most brilliant person in the world on philosophy or science. You still need to get back to the simplicity of the gospel. In your own personal, private life, in your own ministry, whenever it's complex, you need to focus on the cross that Christ died for you. Keep it simple. When you don't know which way to turn, when you find it's complicated, when you find it's very difficult, just meditate on the cross and the power of God will come and the power of the Lord will come in your life. The joy of the Lord will come. The strength and the vision that you need will come. And it will be a battle. The devil will rage against you. The devil will try to come against you. The devil will try to pull you down. And it will be a battle with you and a wrestle with you when you're wrestling with the devil because the devil wants to take you down. But the, you keep fleeing to the cross. You keep fleeing to the Lord. Then there's might and joy and power and love of God will come in. And you will be safe in the arms of God. Because you're meditating on the cross, you're meditating on the Lord, you're meditating on Him, and in Him is the power, in Him is the strength. And so you're going to the source of strength, you're going to the source of power, you're going to the source of victory. It's Jesus, Jesus. You're going to Him, and the power will come, and the enemy will be broken. The enemy will be broken, my friend. Be strong in him. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 18, 10. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10. Oh, my friend, what a wonderful word. This is 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is saved. Oh, my friend, as you walk in the presence of God, as you walk in the joy of the Lord, as you walk under the banner of Christ, as you walk in that privilege, blessing of the covenant of Christ and all that he's done for you, all that he did for you, all that he's done, that he shed his blood for you, and you're covered in the blood of the Lamb, the enemy will have to go. The enemy will flee when you claim the blood of Christ over your life. So keep it simple. When it gets complex, when it gets very complex, then you're scratching your head and you're finding what to do. Go to the cross, meditate on the Lord, and you'll win through. And number six, pray in the Spirit. Ephesians 6 verse 17. We've missed some things out in this passage. I can't expand everything. But Ephesians 6 verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereon with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying in the Spirit. Romans 8 26. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. Let the Spirit of God dwell in you and, and inspire your prayers and, and take the Word of God and read the Word of God and pray in the Spirit. Allow the Spirit 
to show you what to pray about and you'll be able to intercede in your situation. And you can read Jude chapter 1 verse 10. You can read 1 Corinthians chapter, I think, 14 verse 15. And there are many other passages on the Holy Spirit. In fact, we, we, let's read uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. For through him we, we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit dwells in you and is working in you and he will inspire you to pray and use the Word of God, read the Word of God and allow the Word of God to speak to you and claim the Word of God and pray over the Word of God. And that will give you uh, great strength. So pray in the Spirit. Allow the Spirit to guide you what to pray for. He will show you what to pray for in the complexity of the challenges that you face. Begin to praise the Lord, begin to worship Him, and then the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you what you need to be praying for in the midst of the difficulty that you face. Okay? So that's just a short little exposition. Um, I, I did the Bible study for today. I didn't have much time to prepare it, so it's just a little, uh, a little meal for you. I hope the meal's been a blessing to you, and um, I just pray that God will bless you. Just grow in the Word of God, grow in the things of God, and continue to meditate on on the things of God. Continue to go forward in 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 the in, in the grace that God has given you. My message to you today is: I said, Lord, uh, what do you want me to do? That's what I always say when I'm preaching. Lord, what do you want me to say? And he gave me this word, and the word is, be strong. You, you're tired, you're discouraged, you're finding it difficult, you feel you can't cope, you feel, you, how can you go forward? But God assures you, he's with you, so he's saying, be strong. He's saying, get rooted in the word of God, know who your enemy is. It's not the individual or people around you, it's the higher enemy, the devil, and you need to engage on that level and engage with the Holy Spirit in prayer and the Word of God. This is, this is what God has, I believe, said to you today, what you needed to hear today. You needed to hear that. And I'm going to sing a song with closing prayer. Forgive me if I'm, my singing is bad. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Loving kindness as the flood When the prince of life our ransom Shed for us his precious blood Who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten through our heaven's eternal days. <clears throat> On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide, through the flood gates of, gates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers Old and and from above and in heaven's peace and perfect justice kiss the guilty world in love forgive me my singing's not been good i know forgive me let's pray lord we come to you today and lord i pray those who've got feeble hands today may they know that you're with them you promised I will go with you. You've said that I am a, he is a rock in times of trouble. And I pray those who have hands that are, are down today, lift them and give them strength. Help them to, to go forward, give them strength, Lord, and just give them peace and power right now. Father, bless them in a mighty way. Fill them in a mighty way. Strengthen them in a mighty way. And Lord, may they overflow with the joy and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless them. And fill them afresh today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And again I say, Amen. Amen.
So that, my friends, is a little Bible study. Don't forget to pray. I'm asking you to pray. Please continue to pray. I was out preaching in Longsight, which is a very predominant Muslim area, and there was a large crowd came. You can actually see the video if you look at the trip, the, the South Manchester trip, uh, street preaching trip, and a, a large crowd come. Fortunately, there were a couple of Christians there, but it was quite scary having all the Muslims argue with me and some of them getting upset, and all I was doing is preaching the gospel. So I really need your prayers. I'm going to a mission uh, soon to Wales, uh, soon to London, and so I really, really need your prayers. I need your prayers. The devil is trying to do everything he can to stop me uh, proclaiming the gospel, and I need your prayers. I need you to stand with me, and I need you to stand with this Royal Blood Ministries. I'm asking you to sow into it in prayer and pray that it would go forward and pray that it would move forward and pray that it would be of God. I've already, God's already provided a, a friend and a church, a pastor and a church that are supporting me and encouraging me and I really value that uh, encouragement and so I'm really blessed of that and I've got some people that want to help me and, and stuff and that's really good And but I, I, I just asking for prayer that you pray more and more that this Royal Blood Ministry would get off the ground and that people would catch the vision. Uh, please pray about that and pray that when I go street preaching I'm safe and, and that I have people with me because sometimes it's very very dangerous in some of these big cities uh, and some of these Muslim areas it's very very dangerous so I need constant prayer, I need constant support in prayer that you're going to stand with me in prayer that you're going to be praying for me every day you can get me on Twitter, you can get me on Facebook you can get my website jasonbursepreacher.com there will be a website in a few months time called Royal Blood Ministries but for the time being you've got my own website at the moment jasonbursepreacher.com so you know some of my favorite uh, YouTube channels uh, Jeremiah Cry Ministries, really good ministry, love them love the ministry Legionnaire Ministries, top and love RC Pro. John MacArthur, top, grace to you, love the guy. Uh, Desiring God Ministries, excellent, love, the, love them. And Sermon Index, excellent, brilliant uh, YouTube channel. Those are some of my favourite uh, websites and YouTube channels. And also Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust. Some of my favourite apologetic sites that I uh, use uh, a Christian Think Tank, uh, Tectonics, uh, these are just some, and um, Ravi Zachariah, uh, there's quite a few different ones that, that I use. Uh, if you want to see the ones that I use, ones that I'm interested in, just go on my website and you'll see loads of stuff there. Okay, so that's it really. God bless you. I'm researching. A high Park, oh, there's a lot of stuff to, to read, I've just been reading tons of hadiths and all sorts of things, so God bless you everybody and have a lovely time and uh, God bless you.